So in this video, we're going to talk about modus tollens, and it's really the same or kind of similar to modus ponens, but it's different in its own way. So this is modus tollens' symbolic form. P implies Q and negation of Q, that implies negation of P. And this is the form of modus tollens in tabular form. So let's go through an example because that's what we always do. So let's say that if Taylor was hired by a bank in NY, then let's have that be P. Then Taylor will move to NY. And let's have that be Q. So that whole statement, this whole statement would be P implies Q. The second statement would be Taylor did not move to NY. So that would be negated Q because if he did move to NY, that would be Q. So he did not move to NY, that's negated Q. Therefore, we can know that Taylor was not hired uh, by the bank in NY. So we know that that is negated P because if it was P, then he would be he would have been hired by the bank, but he was not hired by the bank, so it's negated P. So that follows our tabular form. P implies Q, not Q. That infers negated P. So that's pretty much modus tollens. You can see that pretty much what you do is you need a negated Q at the at the bottom, and you need a Q that is inferred by P and then you just cancel these two out and you, you, you're left with a P and you're left with the negation symbol. So what really happened is we just got rid of the Q's and we moved this negation symbol to P. So now that that's through and done with, let's do a simple example. Let's establish validity with modus tollens and uh, I'd like to say that in this example, we're also going to use the law of syllogism that we learned in the last video, along with some logical equivalents that we've learned or or acquired from the from the rules of or from the laws of logic that I told you to memorize. So here's all uh, our statements, and P R S T U are primitive statements. And so these are our premises above the horizontal line, and that negated P would be our conclusion. So we're trying to establish the validity of this, of this statement, of this example, or of this argument. So let's just start. So we actually have 11 steps, and the first step would be establishing our premises. So we know we have P implies R and R implies S. Now you don't always have to start with the first two, you don't always have to go from top to bottom. Just go with whatever you have that that can get rid of as many premises as you can as early on as you can. So I'm starting with these two because these are premises that I have to get rid of. Eventually I have to get rid of all of these five premises and I have to come up with negated P to to that validate this argument that I'm that I'm working on. So that's one, and that's the first step. So we know that from the law of syllogism that we learned in the last video, syllogism, that if P implies R and R implies S, that's pretty much saying that P implies S. So that's syllogism for you. So then the third step, let's take on our third another premise, and that would be T or negated S. And that is another premise. So already we've uh, we've already factored in the first one, the second one, the first one, the second one, and the third one. So now that we've have our third step, our fourth step, we're gonna swap these two places. So we're trading places and we have negated S or T and this is from our laws of logic. This is the commutative law, and I'm sure you remember that the commutative law of or pretty much just switching places, taking this negative s, putting it in the in place of where t is, and taking t, putting it on place of where the negated s is, and that's commutative law, and you find that in your laws of logic, which I told you to memorize. The fifth step, uh, what we have here is s implies t because we know that uh, negated s or t that is 
logically equivalent to S implies T. So that's all fine and dandy. So what we have now is remember that we have we still have this P implies S. So we still have that P implies S. Now we have S implies T. So what we can do is we can use syllogism again. We can use syllogism to get P implies T because P implies S and S implies T. So we could just cut out the middleman P implies T. That's syllogism. Sixth step done. The seventh step is going through the next premise. And that's negated T. And I don't know where that went, but negated T or U. And that is just another premise. So that's what we're trying to do. We're going to get rid of all the premises and establish validity of the argument. And again, from this, we can get uh, T implies U much the same from this slot from this this law that we have here forgot which one it is but it's law that is logically equivalent to uh, t implies u so 9 what we have now is we have p implies u because p implies t and t implies u cut out the middleman p implies u Syllogism again. And then we have the last premise, which is negated u. So that is a premise. So that's the last premise that we handled. And the last and final step, 11, um, we have p implies u, and we have negated u, and that will give us negated p by modus tollens because that's what we get, right? We need uh, we need a Q and a negated Q. Well, we just replace that with U and a negated U. P is still kept, and so we get a negated P. So from that, we establish the validity of this argument. We used all the premises, which you have to do, and we got our conclusion, which is negated P. So things that you have to remember here, try to get rid of as many premises as early as possible and use your laws of logic that you memorize. You will have to use these new rules of inference that you are to learn. We have more rules to go through in the, next, in the future videos, but this is where we are at now, and I hope you've actually learned something. Other than that, please rate, comment, subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and I'll see you guys again next time. Thanks for watching.